Hello, what's up YouTube? Ronnie Sweet and I'm sure in this tutorial I want to show you a very nice and easy way to sharpen your images in Photoshop. So this technique is not going to be the high pass method whereby you create a high pass filter and add it to your images. But this technique is just going to be sharpening by using a given aspect within sharpening in Photoshop. So let me show you how that is going to work out for this very image. And if at all you find this video really helpful, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe this channel. If at all you're watching and you're not subscribed this channel. So let's start with the tutorial that brought us here. So let me show you how to do this. So if at all you have been retouching your image, always make sure that you create a stamped visible layer by hitting Shift Alternate Command E on the keyboard. And that is going to create for you a screenshot for everything I've been retouching beneath. So if at all you are using Windows, you can use Shift, Control, Alternate E on the keyboard to create a stamp visible layer. But right now, for my case, I just have a background image. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to duplicate this background image by hitting Control Command J on the keyboard. And after doing that, I'm just going to name this, rename it to sharpen and after doing that i'm just going to simply come right here to filter and i'm going to come to sharpen so this is what i was meaning we're just going to be using a given aspect of the sharpening to sharpen the image so that sounds a little bit obvious so i'm just going to come to sharpen and i'm going to come to smart sharpen so under smart sharpen it is going to open for us this other window for us and I hope you can see that by default, you're going to be having this looking like this. So let me show you a trick you can use, especially for us that use our frequency separation as a skin retouching technique. So usually by default, you're going to be having it at lens blur right here. So amount is the amount of sharpening that you want to add to your image. So if I told you want, a very high sharpening added you can take it a little bit higher and you can see our image tends to be a little bit very sharp but this creates a little bit of artifacts that are created as a result of using for example those people that use the high pass filter as a sharpening technique so you don't want to take the amount too high so for this case i'm just going to use an amount of around 216 and that looks great for me and it is not too much so for the radius this is going to determine the amount or the strength or the distance between your sharpening of the image so I'm just going to zoom out right here in the preview so if I told you check the radius up and you look at your image you can see it creates that kind of artifact and it really Place that kind of hollowing effect around the edges of your image. So you don't want to take the radius up because what this does, it spreads or increases the gap within the sharpening pixels. So you can see it creates that kind of hollow effect around the edges of your image. So you don't want that to happen. So always make sure that you keep your radius as low as possible to prevent that kind of hollow effect. So I would recommend that you usually don't go above one pixel. And usually I don't reduce the noise. But if at all you feel like your image has noise as a result of sharpening, you can come and take up the reduced noise slider and that is going to reduce on the amount of noise within the image. So I'm just going to I'm just going to leave this at round one and that looks okay to me. So you can see when I click right in the preview window, you can see the before and the after for the sharpening. Just look at the before and look at the after. It is very well sharpened. So if at all, like I said, if at all you use frequency separation as a skin retouching technique, always make sure that you come right here and you come and remove the Gaussian blur effect. So this is going to remove the Gaussian blur effect that is at one point reduces the level of detail 
in our images. So I'm just going to activate, remove Gaussian blur right here. And if at all your preview option is having any issues uh, displaying this, just make sure that the preview option is activated. So I'm just going to come and hit OK. And after doing this, the image is going to be sharp, fine, but we don't want the sharpening effect to be applied in all areas of our image. So what we want to do, let me just try zooming in right here. So you can see the before and after for the sharpening of our image. You can see the image already looks sharp, but when you're sharpening, we don't want, for example, the lips to be sharp. And if at all you feel like uh, the skin is looking a little bit weird, you have to create a layer mask for your image so that you can paint in that sharpening effect in specific areas. So what we're going to do, we're just going to come right here on the layer mask and hold down the alternate key on the keyboard. So hold down that button that has ALT. And when you hold it down, click on this add layer mask icon. And when you do that, it's going to hide the sharpening and it's going to create a black layer mask. Remember, in Photoshop, black is going to hide and white is going to reveal. So we're just going to come to the brushes right here. Simply right click and you're going to come to our brush tool. So it is a brush tool and make sure the hardness is at zero percent, meaning the brush is going to be a soft round brush and the opacity and the flat are hundred percent. And after doing that, just come right here and make sure you have black and white on these two small boxes right here. And in order to have black and white, you can just come and click on these two small boxes to have black and white right here displaying. And in order to switch between black and white, you can use X on the keyboard. So when you click X or press X on the keyboard, it's going to switch between black and white. So make sure the white palette is on top right here. So meaning the brush is going to be white in color. And in this case, we're just going to be applying the sharpening effect in areas that we want to sharpen in this specific image. So for this case, I would love to sharpen the eyes of a model. So increase on the size of your brush tool by using the bracket keys on the keyboard. So I'm just going to sharpen the eyes and you can see the eyes look nice and crisp sharp. I'm just going to come and sharpen this other second eye. And after doing that, I'm just going to look for areas that I want to sharpen. So if at all you feel like you want to sharpen the skin, which I don't advise in most cases, you can come and apply the sharpening on the skin if at all you feel like it is going to work for you. So I'm just going to paint in the skin so that you can see the effect or how that affects the image in real time. You can see everywhere I'm painting, it is really getting sharp or sharpened. So I'm just going to sharpen the skin area too. And like I said, if at all the skin looks weird when you sharpen it, don't do it. So I'm just trying to do this for purposes rather of education. And I want to show you how the sharpening is going to affect or affect this image in a general. So I'm just going to sharpen there. And I wouldn't advise you to sharpen the hands because that is going to add a little bit of more texture and don't sharpen the lips because that is going to make the lip area look a little bit weird so you can see we have now painted in the sharpening effect and let me show you the before and after for a sharpening so this is the image before sharpening and this is the after before and after this is a more effective way of sharpening images within photoshop so this is it for this tutorial and if at all you have loved this don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe this channel if at all you have been watching and you know subscribe this channel ronix from ronix photography thank you for watching i'll see you in yet more amazing tutorials and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating